This video will be entirely shot on the new Canon RF 15mm 1.8 STM. What a mouthful. Unless I am taking footage of that lens, then I will be using the EF version. Hi everyone, my name is Kyle Wong, and today I'm going to be comparing the Canon RF 15mm 1.8 STM to the older Canon EF 15mm 1.8 STM and why you might pick one over the other. The first thing I'm going to be talking about is the image quality and if you've owned a nifty 50 before then there won't be much different here. Generally speaking for the size of these lenses and the price you're paying the image quality is quite good. I would say that the RF version is maybe a little bit sharper however it still has a lot of green and magenta chromatic aberrations as well as some deep vignetting around the edge when shot wide open. Now you do have a closer minimum focus distance for the RF version of this lens which is 0.3 meters versus the older EF which had a minimum focusing distance of 0.35 meters which overall could come in handy however there are very marginal differences in terms of the image quality and the optics of this lens. Talking about build quality, the RF version does have a slightly better feeling plastic in my opinion, however both feel very good. I think the fit and finish for the RF version does fit the R cameras a lot better than the EF version does, however one thing I will note is that the focus ring slash control ring on the newer RF version is actually just a lot nicer feeling in, in the newer version. The older version had not much resistance at all and it kind of just felt like you're spinning a ring around the lens that wasn't really attached to anything. Um, there wasn't really any dampening, which makes it harder to focus manually with the EF version. And both of these lenses have metal lens mounts on the rear. For the filter size, the RF version does have a new 43 millimeters smaller than the original EF version, which was 49 millimeters. The 43 millimeters is similar to the EOS M primes that Canon has for the 22 millimeter and the 32 millimeter, which means you can share filters across these lenses. However, 43 millimeters being less common than 49, I'd probably prefer 49 rather than 43. The front element on the Canon EF 50mm is a lot more recessed than the RF version, so if you are moving around with the camera and you are worried about the front element of the glass, then you might want to get a filter to protect it, specifically with the RF version more so because the glass element comes further out. As a side note, I also tried using the lens hood from the EF version on the RF version, which unfortunately doesn't fit. The focus motor is a newer version of Canon's STM focus motors that they've been using in most of their lenses since the mid 2010s. And I think this is a much better iteration than the one they put on in the EF version. Generally, you just hear less micro adjusting when you do focus on different objects. Both focus fairly quickly and about at the same speed, however the RF one does feel a little bit smoother somehow. Here's a test of the autofocus sounds for the RF and EF version. The control ring was a new addition for the RF version and with this was the change of the autofocus manual focus switch into the control slash focus switch. I particularly find this a little bit bothersome because I wouldn't use the control ring on this too much. Um, however, even though I don't use manual focus on this lens either that much, I did find times where it was just more convenient to have the manual focus switch on the side so I wouldn't have to dive into the menus and look for the change to autofocus to manual focus. The EOS R cameras do have the full-time manual focus where you can manually focus after you have autofocus engaged, but it just feels more cumbersome than it has to be if they just left the manual focus switch there. In terms of the value, I am in Canada and the EF version goes for $169.99 versus the R version sitting at $269.99, which is about a $100 price gap between the two. 
And in watching this video, I'm assuming that you guys have a EOS R camera. However, if you do shoot with both EF and RF system, then it might be more convenient if you just continued using the EF version. The RF version is convenient in the sense that you don't have to use an adapter with it and it will pack more compact in that sense if you have it mounted on the camera. But beyond that, the RF version has just slight overall improvements over the EF version. Now, whether or not this is worth the extra $100 is really up to you. I will mention that the EF SPM version has been out for much longer, and this means that there's a lot more copies of them across the secondhand market. And you can probably get one for as little as $100, $120 which is a good discount, which goes down to about half the price or less than half the price of a new RF 50 millimeter lens. So would I recommend this lens? Yes, definitely if you're shooting on the RF system and you're looking for a nice little prime to bring around, just being smaller without the adapter makes it worth it for me. And the slight overall improvements in image quality make it a fun little lens you can bring around in your everyday life and potentially take on the occasional job. If you're more interested into portraits, then I'd probably go for a 35 or 85 millimeter focal length rather than this 50, just for a more dramatic effect. I heard that the Samyang RF 85 millimeter 1.4 seems to do pretty well, especially for the price. So if you have a higher budget for that, then that might be a good option for you. That concludes this week's video. If you found it helpful, be sure to hit the like button down below. If you're interested in more photography gear talk, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss a video. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see everyone in next week's video. Bye.